Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, today's video we are going to be covering motorcycle maintenance. Uh, we're not going to get too involved today, I'm just going to go over a few basic things um, which will help keep you and your bike safe, roadworthy and most of all well maintained and clean. So we'll get started on this little Yamaha 125. Now to make things easier in these little maintenance per periods and just generally checking your bike over is remembering a simple acronym. Some of you may have even heard of this before. It's called BOLTS. So as you can see B-O-L-T-S Brakes, Oil, Lights, Tires, Suspension and Steering. Now a lot of people just say steering or suspension so I like to add them both in because they're both important. So, brakes. First thing that you want to be checking. If you have a hydraulic brake at the front, which most modern bikes do, you want to be looking at your fluid reservoir. This one looks a little bit low and the fluid looks a little bit dirty. The other thing is checking the free play on the lever. Should be a slight little bit of free play and also making sure that brake lever doesn't touch the handlebar. If that was to be spongy and come all the way in, that would suggest that there's air in the system. That's a bad thing on hydraulic brakes. Now, moving down from that section, this is your reservoir, obviously a lever, then this bolt here, also called banjo bolt, follows a flexible hose down the front to your caliper. You want to be checking that to make sure it's not perished, there's no cords coming through, and also make sure it's not leaking. Same applies down at the banjo bolt on the caliper. You've got your bleed nipple, you want to make sure that that's clean, not corroded, and also not leaking. And then, also, you have your brake pads. Now, the brake pads on this particular bike aren't as easy to see on camera, so what you want to do sometimes is undo the caliper bolt if you can, Swing it open and have a look at the condition of your pads. Also your front brake disc. You want to make sure it's not too scored, it's not excessively corroded, and also make sure there's no cracks in the disc. Checking your mounting bolts, making sure that they're tight, and just general maintenance of this area consists of making sure there's no leaks, no excessive corrosion, no free play, and no cracks. As for the rear brake on this bike, it's a drum, so obviously there's not a lot that we can see without taking the wheel out. But there's always a good indicator on there that will help you know if your brake pads are starting to wear down. On the back of the arm there's a little tin arrow which points towards a mark on the drum. If that's getting close towards that mark, it's showing that your rear shoe linings are getting close to needing replacement. Another basic check is just to make sure that on your pedal you're not getting excessive travel and also by spinning your wheel and hitting the brake and ensuring it engages properly without a delay, juddering or even nasty noises. Any of these things involving your brakes, if it's unsettling, make sure that it's inspected either by yourself or a professional garage. So we move on to our second thing which is O for oil. Now some bikes have a sight glass, as you can see this one's been blanked but it has a dipstick. Now the use of the dipstick varies per bike some manufacturers like to check it whilst it's wound in, some like to check it whilst it just rests on the top of the threads, and obviously some, like some BMWs believe it or not, you have to check when it's on the side stand. The capacity of the oil can be written on the side of the crankcase, but if it's not, refer to your manufacturer's speci specifications. When checking your oil, obviously it's not just the level, it's the colour and consistency. If it's a nice clear brown colour, almost a golden colour, that indicates that it's quite fresh. If it's black, or has a milky colour, or even a grey colour, that's indicating that there may be an issue internal for the engine or your clutch plates. So obviously most bikes run a wet clutch system. So we move on to L, which is lights. Now lights can be checked on your own by using back wall of your shed, garage, or even if you parked outside, just the wall of the building. 
obviously you want to turn your ignition on this bike has daytime running lights so as we can see we've got our dip beam our main beam and what we're also checking is that the telltale light also comes on now if we move to the back of the bike we can see we have the tail light and by reaching across with your foot you can check for the brake for the rear and you can do the same for the front by checking the reflection the indicators are quite easy to check flick your switch look for the telltale look at the front and also look at the rear that applies for both sides now a secondary thing for the lights is obviously our newer bikes they have engine management systems this one illuminates for roughly three to five seconds and then it goes out obviously you want to make sure that that does disengage properly and also it's not displaying any error codes I know on Yamahas they all flash in a manner of times short and long for many more or many less and that will give you its fault code so that is also one worth checking another thing is if your bike is a two stroke you'll sometimes have an oil light which will tell you when your oil reservoir is low of two stroke oil always want to look out for and check your reservoir at least twice a week I would recommend on a two stroke anyway if you're doing higher mileage commuting so T moves on to tires now obviously you want to make sure you've got the right size the correct fitment making sure it's not fitted in the wrong rotation and also you want to be checking your tread depth now legal limit for a motorcycle in the UK is one millimeter but obviously that's over three quarters of the tread that's how it goes into the MOT perspective anyway you want to be making sure there's no cracks no bald patches no cords showing and also check around your sidewall making sure that there's no cracks splits lumps or bumps if there's any lumps or dis disformities get a new tire straight away don't second guess you also want to check around your valve making sure that's not leaking and it's well seated now for your front tyre the same applies obviously checking round lumps, bumps, cracks also the date stamp is also worth looking at if you buy a bike and the tread's good it doesn't mean that the tyre's good now this tyre for example was made on the 15th week 2015 this is quite an old tyre now and it is starting to slowly dry perish next step for this bike is a replacement front tyre it's recommended that on a bike that you don't keep a tyre any longer than three to four years maximum but obviously that depends on the manufacturer specifications from the vehicle and the tyre company now suspension this is where it gets a little bit different for most bikes not all bikes have twin shock some have monoshock some have dual linkage some of the early BMWs had a centred shock in the front and had rigid fork brace. And even if you go older, you could go to girder type forks. But we're not going to get into that because it's not as common. So, first things that you want to check. We'll start with the front forks. You want to look down the stanchion and ensure there's no excessive oil leaking from your seals. Now this on top here is just a dust seal. So don't get confused thinking that's your fork seal underneath set in the top of the lower leg is a fork seal that stops your fluid your oil coming out and traveling out and giving you a lack of damping obviously if you start to notice an excessive amount of oil on that it's time for new fork seals another thing you want to check on the stanchion is for excessive pitting if you've got corrosion which causes pitting on these and the chrome starts going off that will damage your fork seals also so always ensure that it's kept clean well lubricated by well lubricated I always and always have done just giving it a wipe down with some WD-40 on a rag that helps keep road salt off and it also help, helps it on this dust seal your rear shockers now this is a twin shock setup so it's got one shock absorber this side and one the other side You've got your spring mounting points, the damper is internal, and you've got your adjustment for your harder preload. Now, on these, you want to be checking for corrosion around the 
base and the top of the spring making sure there's no cracks or fractures and also looking for an excessive amount of oil coming out the same as you would on your front forks another thing worth checking is the bushings if the bushings have excessive movement then you're going to have problems when you're on the road it's going to cause all sorts of wobbly and jelly like feeling when you're going through corners so in general keeping them clean keeping them coated with something like ACH50 WD40 or even GT85 just to help as a preventative measure to help you keep them clean and keep a better eye on them. As I said earlier, your tyre pressure information most commonly on these smaller bikes is on your chain guard. It will give you a reading for unladen or laden weight, that's depending if you're going to carry passengers or not. So, steering. You've got a pair of handlebars, you have your top yoke and in between the two you've got a set of bearings so you want to make sure that they've not got too much play or if they've got flat spots if you've got someone to help you do this this is brilliant because they can put their weight down on the back something you can do on your own for fun you've got a level surface that's hard enough if your bike has a center stand put out a rear foot peg stand at the side of the bike apply a little bit of weight to that rear foot peg that takes the weight off the front now what you want to do is gently just with two fingers move the steering lock to lock now if you've got problems with flat spots in the bearing you would be able to chuck it across and it wouldn't bounce back it would hold in one place too loose and you'd feel clunkiness across the front another way to check this is if someone puts their weight on the back you can grab the bottom of the fork legs and pull towards you sat at the front of the bike if there's any movement or clunking at all, that will in indicate that the bearings are no good and they will need replacement. Another thing to do when you're checking for your steering and suspension is check your wheel bearings. If someone's with you, they can apply weight to the rear of the bike, which gives you free movement. If you used to rotate that round and feel excessive rumbling, grinding or even just a general unsettling noise, you know that it might need attention to the wheel bearings. The same applies to the rear. So, if you grab at 12 and 6, if you can, providing if the mudguard's in the way, maybe go for across the axle. And then give it shake side to side with the bike steering on full lock to help minimise steering play. If you feel any side side float, notching side side or even a clicking, this could indicate that the bearings are about to fail or need replacing soon. It's a particularly particularly cheap job and it's not too bad to do yourself with the right tools. Even in a bike shop it's not too expensive, so it's not worth putting off for the safety of you on the road. Another thing I add into the check, because it's not stated in the bolts acronym, is your chain you want to be making sure that that is in good condition, clean, well lubricated as well as your sprockets. Now on your sprockets you want to be checking the condition of the teeth. If they look like a shark's fin it's time to replace and with your chain you want to rotate it round, make sure there's no tough links and ensure that there's no excessive corrosion. If one of these links was to be stuck up at an angle it's not going to travel over your sprocket correctly. That could also throw the chain off when riding and could be a catastrophic event if it was to go into your back wheel. So just keep an eye on your chain, keep it clean, you can buy brushes um, from motorcycle parts factors that hook around and they clean it for you and there's a numerous amount of chain lubricants and cleaners out there but that's time for another video. Another thing I like to encourage in the maintenance of your bike is keeping it clean. The more you clean your bike, the more you get to know it. So when you're going across and you start, if you have a routine from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the back, etc. You're cleaning that front wheel, you'll see if there's a problem with your brake pads, you'll notice if there's fork oil leaking from the seals. And obviously the more you travel along the bike, you can clean in these areas, you notice if, oh, there's a leak coming from that head gasket or that output gear change seals needs replacing. My chain is also too rusty and that needs doing shock absorbers that could be an easy missed one especially for a commuting bike so general maintenance is also tied in with cleanliness of the bike making sure it's kept clean you're able to spot issues 
even down to little things, you can start to notice rust starting to form on bolt heads. It sounds silly, but that can cause major issues in the future. If you drop your bike and break your lever, and that bolt's seized in, then you've got a problem with drilling it out, or having to buy a new cradle for the lever. So it's preventative maintenance, really. So, once you've carried out these checks, and you're happy that everything seems to be in order, you can then enjoy going out for a ride. Now, when it comes to using the lubricants, such as the engine oil, or even your brake fluid, make sure you use the right one, because there's so many out there. It's as simple, if you don't have a manufacturer's book, or you don't have a service book, you can go on the internet, there's plenty of information out there, there's plenty of forums for the bikes as well. So, most common one for your brake fluid is making sure you use DOT4. With your engine oil, making sure if you're the right choices with synthetic, fully synthetic, part synthetic, mineral, there's so many choices, so make sure you use the right one. One that I missed out when going through there on the tyres is the correct pressure. You'll normally find that down on the chain guard, inside or under the seat. Making sure that the correct settings on these is imperative. If you use the incorrect tyre pressures on the front, for example, if it's too low, it can feel like the handlebars want to turn in on slow corners. If your pressure's too high, that can cause it to feel like it's on a knife edge. And it can also cause problems going through longer corners. It's not allowing it to absorb the bumps in the road and can cause the front end to wash out. So, general maintenance isn't too hard. Making sure that you keep safe on the road also falls into the same category. It's not too hard. So, hopefully these little tips can help just keep you safe and keep your bike in good working order which is also not helping you it's helping other road users now another video will be going into more detail of how to change brake fluid how to change oil spark plug etc even down to battery and bulb replacement so hopefully this is just a nice little starter to a small series of which i want to carry on so that's it for now guys nice to see you again and we'll see you later thank you